Here we are, and we are in my patented little uh, cardboard spray booth. Now you might be able to see a bit more clearly the kind of mudded effect that I have accomplished here, and you may even see just tiny little splatterations on the underside of my fuel tanks. And that, that's all I wanted. I only wanted a simple effect. I didn't really want to go to town with heaps of mud. I mean, I may do that another day, but this just breaks up that boring panel at the back there. Okay, because on the other side, where I have done nothing, you'll see, it just looks like a toy, you know, fresh in the factory. Yes, which which is fine. So, how did I accomplish this? Well, it really wasn't that hard, actually, once I sort of learnt my method. Now, first off, I need some pigments. Now, these actually happen to be Humbrol. This is a Humbrol weathering powder, but because that's what my local hobby shop had. But really, any sort of um, little mud effect pigment will work. And this is a nice little dark one. Which, which, I, which I chose. Well, I chose because it's the only bloody one they had. So there you go. Now, what I found is dry brush and randomly splodge on, although you are looking for more mud at the bottom, of course. Mud will accumulate around things. And this is just dry pigment, and I'm just basically knocking it up into areas where I think it'll go. I'll put a little bit on the wheels, you know, not much. I don't really want to mud things up too. Uh, and that's about it. Okay, so already you can see there's quite a bit of muddiness happening. Alright, so you sort of get that. And the beauty is if this is being pigmented, I can sort of mess around with it and flop it about. It's only dry pigment at this stage. Can't really go wrong. Alright, so I'm happy with that. That's all I needed. And that's that's the muddiness that I want from this. So the next stage is, I'm going to use this thing called a fixer. And essentially, I'm not quite sure what this thing is, it doesn't actually tell you, but um, I think you can pretty well do a similar sort of thing if you used white glue. Um, or you could use some sort of thinners and that might bind this and make it work, I don't know. But I chose the MIG fixer because it's supposed to do this job. And that's what I needed it for. And it seemed to work. Now, if I can find my bloody paintbrush, oh dear, dear, dear. All right, so fixer. It has a bit of an acrylic -y smell to it. Getting some fixer on your brush, you just drop it in. That's what I found. You literally splatterate it in. If I found if you actually go down and paint with it and get too close and start, you know, with brush strokes, and then you end up really painting with the stuff, um, it then becomes a pigment that you're actually painting with, and you know, that, that may be an effect, but I wanted it to have a bit of a raised and rough and textured look, just like mud. And the pigments will do that if you kind of just give them a whole lot of the fixer. So you kind of just drop it in and it runs everywhere and it's as easy as that. So there's not a lot of skill required, you just basically Throw it in everywhere and make sure that you get it on everything. Now, one little trick, or one thing I found is, as you're doing this, your brush gets pigment on it. And now it actually can be used as wash. <laughs> How about that? So now my brush, because it's got... Now, I probably shouldn't have used the same brush in with the um, the bottle here, but I'm um, seeing this is the only pigment I've got, and I'm just learning, and I'm quite happy to buy another bottle of, um, of the fixer down the track. I'm just using this, and I might even get a bit of pigment on there. I'm getting a couple of things happening here. So, I'm getting a bit of a dark wash, which is handy to bring out all the details. And... I've got a nice big almighty mess there, haven't I? Okay, so let's uh, adjust the light a bit. Maybe it'll be a bit... Uh, today. Anyhow, it's, it's very messy, but it's going to look exactly like that other side. Now, what I found is, the first time I did it, I left that to dry and then did my other stuff. Well, you don't really need to. Not at all. I mean, 
you don't need to wait for anything to dry, I found. What you can do is you can start applying the next stage, which is I'm going to use some, this is just cursed soil, it's just a nice light sort of sandy soil colour that I that I basically got. And I've also got some acrylic brown here. Now, you might say, you're mixing things together. There's a method in my madness. Because oil and water don't like to mix, you get interesting effects. So, this is 100% acrylic. And it's Russian brown, so <laughs> it's right for my tank. But it's a shade lighter than that. I'm going to put that on a toothbrush. Crazy, isn't it? And then I'm going to flick it on. And you probably could do that with a toothpick rather than using your finger, but seeing as it's water based, I'm not too worried. Not too worried at all. Now, this may be too subtle for the camera to pick up at this point, but I'm actually getting little particles of that brown in there. And because it's oil and water together, and they're not happy, they um, it tends to sort of sit and in a funny little way. And it creates little ripples and splodges, which is exactly what I wanted. And I want that kind of randomness and a bit of patina and that sort of thing. And, and that will happen. All right. In fact, there's more spiderations all over the inside of my spray booth. I think you can see it. Anyway, so it is there. It's kind of splattered around, gone everywhere. Now, the next... The next trick is the the soil, right? Now, I should start with another brush, but I'm not. I'm going to be incredibly naughty here. Well, actually, what I'll do is I'll shake. Because basically, this is going to be my weathering formula. I'm not too worried about there being a bit of contamination of one thing or the other. You shouldn't do this. You should do this properly and um, basically use a clean something or other for each thing that you're going to do. But I'm not. So again, I've got some paint on here, and I'm going for some big splodges. Now I'm going to have to clean up afterwards because I'm getting this all over me, but I'm not too worried. It's not a lot. It's not like I'm actually sort of bathing in it. And I don't know if that's going to show up. It's probably too subtle. Can you see any of that? Does it, does it show? It is working, believe me, that I'm getting a very light um, sort of splatteration as though mud had got flicked up. All right. I'll show you the effect, say, down here, right? Look, see that? That's what we're getting here. And it doesn't matter that it's hitting the tracks because that's what it would do in the real life. See how I'm working from the bottom up? I'm working in the direction that a splatter would occur. And that seems to add some realism. So I'm working from the wheels which would kick things up and I'm splattering. And it's, it is going up into all little areas and nooks and crannies where you'd expect it to go. Okay, so that's given me the beginnings of my effect. Now I will need to do more. I probably want to get some more dark dark pigment under there and um, I could do another trick with that Ooh, sorry about all the banging okay so if I do it this way I'll put a little bit of pigment in a receptacle and then I will get some of my in this case odorless you know this is like an odorless tips Right, which which I prefer because then I'm not going to basically give myself too much nasal affection. Now I know I should use another clean brush. I don't care. This is this is mud. This is weathering. Okay. Now underneath those fenders there, I really would like to get some more mud. So I'm going to splatter that up all in there. And so this would be so much easier if I was doing this um, with everything off. And that's probably the way I prefer to do it. So again, I've got... That's pretty thin, my weathering here, so... My solution. So I've really muddied up and got everything that I want out of that now. 
that'll um that'll do. Now I can add a little more. You know, I want a bit more sort of a muddied effect where it's going to accumulate. And it doesn't matter if I've accidentally banged the tracks. That's all part of the joy of all this, because they would they would get a little bit of mud on them too. So really, you can you can go to town. All right? It's up to you as to how far you take this. I'm just showing you some of the little methods and tricks that that I've picked up, and it's really not that hard. Now it's just up to your creativity and your imagination as to how far you'd go. If you had a couple of different shades of pigment, and I'd recommend that would probably be a better way of going. I'd suggest you have a dark and a light, and with your um. With your splatteration, again, a dark and a light, although I've kind of cheated by, by mixing acrylics and enamels. Not a good idea normally because you bugger things up when you mix those two. But here, because you want kind of welling effects and streakiness and blobbiness, all the things you're normally trying to avoid when you're painting, you can actually mix those two together <laughs> and it creates some interesting effects. At least I think so. So there you go. That's the kind of way that I managed to accomplish some mudding on my tank.